Good. So, since we seem to be a full screen, I think it's time to start. Hi, I'm Lewis. So, you're calling in from Italy, I believe. So, yeah, we're all across Europe here. Very nice. And America and Australia. It's nice to have that perception when we practice meta because the meta is kind of like shining throughout the world. You can imagine it like little light bulbs or little flames all joining up across the world. Very nice. So what we normally do in these meta sessions is um, just use them as an opportunity to soften the heart a little bit and to expand our field of awareness to include more of our experience, more of life, more of others, including those who we don't always have easy relationships with. Um, so what we usually do, because this is an ongoing session, is we focus on one particular uh, group of people each time, or perhaps a particular individual that represents a group of people to you. So we normally take this from the Visuddhimagga, which is some of the commentaries in Buddhism. It's not directly from the suttas. Uh, in the suttas, the Buddha talks about spreading metta in the four directions. And that's basically what we're aiming to do. We're aiming to be able to practice metta by just spreading it infinitely, indiscriminately, in each direction, you know, no matter who is there, like whoever might be towards the south, north, east, west, or in between, up, down, all around, we spread them metta. But this is more of a stage by stage practice that really makes sure that we're actually overcoming some of our own hindrances to practicing metta. And the biggest of those hindrances is ill will, or aversion, or resentment, grudges, irritation, frustration, etc. Just that contraction of the heart. So the meta is not for the purpose of changing anyone else, even making anyone else happy. The meta is for the purpose of opening our own hearts and for the purpose of weakening um, the hindrances of ill will, of fear, of, um, you could say, othering people, right? Like basically opening ourselves in a very um, soft and encompassing and forgiving way uh, to the world and to others. So this is our aim. It's not about getting a special feeling or uh, a kind of layer of anything that we contrive and fabricate to put on top of our real emotions. Um, it's more of an opening. So if at any point you're not actually feeling meta, don't worry. That becomes your object of loving kindness. You yourself can become your object of loving kindness. The, the anxiety, the um nervousness whatever it is that's arising in you sometimes the contraction um but today uh, last week venerable Upeka, who's sitting beside me led a very beautiful meta meditation emphasizing the person we call the neutral person so a person we don't have a lot of involvement with or we don't have particularly strong feelings of liking or disliking toward and today we're going to be uh highlighting the rather more difficult person, sometimes called the, um, um, what do they call it, the disliked person, but of course it isn't really a fixed thing <laughs> because our feelings can change. So we'll begin as usual by uh, gradually developing meta to ourselves and to pe beings who are easier, but then we will spend a little bit of time with those who are difficult. So again, if at any time, um, difficult emotions come up see if you can bring them also into the field of metta if that's really difficult then just go back a step to someone who's easier mm -hmm. surround yourself by those easier people and uh, the people that bring a smile to you to your heart and who you feel safe around yeah or just stay with yourself and hold yourself in kindness so just good morning to Udayanti as well I'm not sure if this is the Udayanti who we know, probably we know you, I'm not sure, but very warm welcome. And uh, please do make yourself comfortable, you haven't really missed anything, we're just about to start the meditation now. So yeah, see if you can go with the instruction, if it doesn't work for you, just stay where you are with whatever works. Okay. 
And as usual in meditation, but especially in meta meditation, we try and make ourselves as comfortable as we can because this is, yeah, this is a part of developing loving kindness towards our own body. We're starting to learn not to control so much, but to respond with gentleness, with kindness, with respect. So see if you can close your eyes. Perhaps retaining the impression of all these wonderful spiritual friends we've gathered with. You might not know each other yet, but many of you do. And I think for many of us, it's a safe space. I hope that everyone else who's newer can sense that too. We're all here with the same intentions to practice opening the heart. And with your eyes closed, the first object of your meta meditation is your own body and mind sitting, arriving, landing in this present moment. With all its imperfections, its lumpiness, its aches, <laughs> just see if you can adjust and give relief to anything that's uncomfortable in the body by adjusting your posture, adding a shawl or a cushion, loosening a piece of clothing, whatever it is, to show your body you care. Perhaps just gently allowing your awareness infused with friendliness and respect to soak through your body from the top of the head as though flowing down like ink spreading through water. Or maybe if you just had breakfast like butter melting through your toast soaking the bread. Just receiving any sensations that manifest in your awareness right now. Giving them space. Letting them be. And just softening your awareness around any areas that feel tight or contracted, tense, painful. Perhaps imagining them expanding like a sponge. until you're able to receive the whole body. With its pleasant, painful and neutral sensations, the whole body is received in loving awareness.
And today I'd like to begin with uh, inviting you to imagine yourself in a very safe space, a physical place. It may be exactly where you are right now. This might be your nest, your safe corner, your practice space in your home that represents kindness, safety, peace for you. It could be a meditation center somewhere in this world, a soft pink carpet of Bodhinyana Monastery Meditation Hall for me is a very beautiful, powerful, safe space. Or perhaps a place in nature, even an imaginary place. So just bring to mind the qualities of the atmosphere around you. Feeling of safety you have in that place. Breathing with this feeling. Filling out as many details mentally as you wish. Really bring that imagery alive for you. And if it is right where you're sitting now, just soaking in the peace. Allowing yourself to relax. To put down some of the defenses we erect in our hearts. And just soften, deepen into this moment. In this safe space. And now I'd like to invite you to bring into this space one or maybe more friends who you feel absolutely at ease with. Imagining them entering this space. If it's a small space, expanding that space. And perhaps just respectfully, gently sitting down next to or in front of you. To 
to share some of the energy and to share their own energy with you. Sensing how it feels to be in the presence of these very dear friends, perhaps a teacher or a benefactor. Perhaps even a parent, a child, or a pet, teddy bear. You might have a whole little circle of friends. And just mentally wishing them well. You can do this energetically by simply connecting with your heart or any area in the body, physical body that feels fairly pleasant and relaxed. And spreading that energy toward them. as though surrounding them in a gentle mist. Or if it helps, you may wish to send wishes of loving kindness that you quietly say within your own mind, within your heart. such as, may you be happy. Fully content. May you be safe. May your suffering end. Just simple wishes in your own words, whatever feels resonant to you. And imagining just offering these wishes the way you'd offer a very special gift. without expectation of thanks or a particular result, just suffusing this friend or friends, these loved people, with sincere well-wishing. Seeing their faces soften and brighten up. Staying connected to the, your own energy, sensations anywhere in the body that feel fairly pleasant and relaxed.
and you start to notice that the energy in this wonderful safe space that's so special to you starts to increase. Starts to shimmer with loving kindness, with a sense of welcome. And attracts even some of the people you don't know too well. Perhaps the neighbor that you sometimes glance across at or wave hello, but don't really know their struggles, their joys. Perhaps a colleague who you've never really taken time to acknowledge. Someone who you don't really have strong feelings towards, just another being, another human being on this journey. You could also appreciate being in a safe and loving space. You're just welcoming them in too. They come into this space gently, quietly, with respect. And also sit down, perhaps a little further from you, or perhaps in the same circle. Wherever feels comfortable. And now the energy from this whole group of beings spreads from the loved beings to these less known people or animals. Perhaps wishing them exactly the same. Happiness, contentment, safety, peace whatever feels resonant to you right now. Staying connected to your own body, perhaps the area around the chest, if that's comfortable. And allowing the energies of loving kindness to spread and suffuse these beings who are neither particularly dear or difficult for you. If you can see their faces, imagining them too, relaxing, looking at ease. Their bodies softening, their hearts opening. As they partake of this wonderful feast of loving kindness. 
shared equally with everyone in this room, this virtual space or perhaps your own space. That space expanding to include them all. And if your mind needs a little bit more direction, more of an anchor, just introducing the phrases of loving kindness again, simple phrases, such as may be happy, fully content. May you be safe. May your suffering end. And just listening to the space between each word to allow the heart to incline towards the emotion of loving kindness. Listening deep inside your heart and trusting the power of these intentions to bear fruit in time. No demand or expectation, just giving to give. And remembering that you're also still sitting with these very dear people, <clears throat> perhaps powerful spiritual friends, people you're utterly safe and at ease with in their company. As well as those who you know a little less well. Feeling the loving kindness being generated.
feeling that sense of safety within this group. And if you feel ready, you may imagine inviting in perhaps a person who you sometimes have difficulties with or haven't quite forgiven for something that they've done. So this should not be a person who's deeply hurt you or the reflection upon whom brings up trauma in the mind, just someone you have some difficulty with. Maybe you don't really like them so much. <laughs> but just recognizing that they too may benefit from loving kindness from this wonderful energy that's being shared. And in a way that's comfortable and safe for you, imagine them to entering the space where you're seated with your friends and others who you perhaps don't know so well. And imagining this difficult or less friendly person coming into the room, perhaps sitting further in the corner or a little bit further from you at a safe distance, but also coming in and settling with a heart that's ready to receive the loving kindness in the space. And if you feel ready, then even spreading intentionally some thoughts of loving kindness to them. Staying connected with any feelings of safety and ease within your body and mind, in your heart. And just gently spreading loving kindness to this being who's also suffering just like us. Spending as long as you wish with this more difficult being. And any time you need to, connecting back with the other beings in the room. Allowing the combined metta to suffuse this person to and anyone else you feel able to invite into this room 
anyone else that's maybe not so friendly to you or who you have some resentment toward. Until everybody's seated together and the meta just spreads to one on all.
Connecting back to that feeling of safety in the body, the feeling of ease and allowing it now. Allowing our combined loving kindness, the atmosphere in this safe space you've created to start spreading beyond the room or wherever you are in your mind. towards all beings in the direction in front of you, all beings. Recognizing that there'll be beings who are dear, beings you don't know or care about very much either way. Beings who you may disapprove of or dislike. All beings who suffer and who respond to loving kindness. Allowing it to spread. not only to human beings, but animals too. The creatures you find cute, lovable, those who may not be pests, but you barely notice, maybe the ants or little worms, birds, Flies. Creatures who might be perceived as dangerous or scary for you. Also just trying to protect themselves, trying to protect their lives, little scorpions. Maybe snakes, all beings. Allowing that matter to spread. Maybe invisible beings like ghosts or devas. And that meta starts spreading now to your right, out of the room, the safe space, and into the world. However far it spreads, to all beings. Spreading behind you, spreading to the left, just allowing the metta to exude in every direction. Embracing all beings wherever they are. Spreading across the land masses of this world and across the oceans, the rivers, the seas, the meta knows no bounds. Spreading down deep below where you're seated into the earth. Maybe right through to the other side of the globe, just allowing that meta to spread beyond physicality.
and to spread upward into the skies. Bringing a golden glow to this whole planet Earth and even beyond. So this beautiful blue-green jewel of the planet Earth starts to exude a shimmering bright light, soft light. into the atmosphere, into the universe, to wherever there's life. So just imagining that loving kindness spreading boundlessly, embracing and encompassing all living beings, even aspects of nature like the trees, mountains, planet Earth herself, and beyond. And just resting in those qualities of loving kindness, however you experience them now. Maybe as intentions, maybe as a softening or opening of the heart. A sense of well-being. And goodwill. Just resting with loving kindness, whatever that means to you. And allowing yourself to receive that loving kindness as I chant the blessing to close this session. Sabi Sata Sabi Pana Sabi Buddha Sabi Pogala Sabi Atta Bawa Pariapana Sabi Tio Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anariya Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe wini pari ka Awe ra hon tu 
Abia Paja Honti Aniga Honti Suki at Nam Pai Hurantu Do Kamunjantu Yada Lada Sampati Mawe gachanti kama saka. Sadhu. 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 <laughs> hey, Matthias is giving it some. <laughs> You're welcome to do that or stay quiet. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to end with a bit of celebration and a smile because it's a very beautiful thing to share loving kindness. And uh, yeah, we can smile no matter what the result. Mm -hmm. Just happy to have turned up, happy to have tried. Happy to have allowed space for these feelings of loving kindness to flourish in our heart. And you might be surprised, even if you don't feel full of metta, that at some point in the day when irritation starts to arise, oh, you just remember some thought of loving kindness towards yourself or another person. And for a moment, it just cuts through that irritation, frustration, that contraction of the heart. So it's a practice, it's a training, but... Uh, very wonderful to give it space. I love these sessions in the morning and together with beings throughout the world. So, And uh, people in my own space here, which is very wonderful. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's nice to share. So we've almost uh, taken the whole hour already, but still it'd be nice to hear if there are any comments or questions or confusions, doubts you'd like to clarify. It's a, an opportunity now to do that. And uh, here we might have to uh, proceed with what we're doing. <laughs> it's nearly 10 o'clock, so if people want to uh, do what they need to do. And if there are any, any comments here, you're welcome to write them in the chat. Nothing, you're so quiet, contented and easily satisfied. <laughs> so that's very nice. And, uh, looks as though some of you might be typing comments, so I'll just give that a couple of minutes before we end. Marika has her hand up. Can we unmute? Thank you, Venerable Chanda. That was really wonderful. It was very uplifting and uh, very, very much needed. A nice reminder when life gets busy to uh, just uh, feel some meta and spread it to other people. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? Sometimes these sessions just act as reminders, you know, just connecting us back with ways we can open the heart and realize, yeah, just as we're busy and sometimes stressed, other people are too. It's very connecting. I think that's one of the beautiful aspects of, of Metta. So thank you for sharing. It's nice to connect with you too. Yeah, to hear voices. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Crystal said it's peaceful. Thank you. A peaceful way of starting the weekend. Beautiful meditation. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Very beautiful. Yeah, the beauty is in our heart, you know. It's not in the meditation session. It's not in the words. It's in our heart. Thank you for a lovely session. Realized how much I had missed the sessions in the past few months. Yeah, we miss you too. 
So always beautiful to see people turning up, no expectation, but it's just lovely when you can pop in. Uh, the Meta led to some insights today. Thank you. Great. Metta is definitely part of insight practice, part of samadhi. The three are all together, really. Three powerful methods, just different ways in. But yeah, my main practices are metta and then using breath meditation to calm the mind and also sometimes some specific techniques of insight practice can be helpful. Just noticing these sensations in the body, their impermanence, the way we react, you know. So, but it needs to be padded with the metta. I feel like it's a kind of padding, it's a resourcing of the mind that allows us to approach, you know, whatever we're experiencing with um, a good attitude, a, a right way of relating that can really open up the field of insight, you know, because it helps us stay with our experience, whatever it is. Yeah. Sometimes people talk about bare awareness, but it's a bit of a myth. Because a lot of the time the awareness, well all of the time, unless we're completely free from the five hindrances, in which case you're very close to deep samadhi, if not you're in the jhana. Um, whenever that's not the case and the five hindrances are operating, then that mindfulness will be tinted with maybe an irritation or a little bit of stiffness, hardness, resistance, uh, uh, or craving, clinging. So the metta is actually, people think it's something we add on, but it's actually less fabricated than those other um, states which are closer to the hindrances. They're more fabricated, actually. The metta is a, is a release of those things. So, yeah, it has great potential to facilitate insight, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. So... I think I've spoken enough and I will um, let you go.